Next Tuesday, Red and Blue will be live from Las Vegas as part of our campaign 2018 Local Matters coverage. We'll be speaking with candidates, reporters, and voters about the candidates and the issues. The polls are showing tight races for Senate and Governor. Democrat Jackie Rosen is trying to unseat Republican incumbent Senator Dean Heller. The two met in a debate earlier this week. And the candidates for governor, Republican Adam Laxalt and Democrat Steve Sisolak, are within less than one point of each other. They are looking to take the office currently held by Republican Brian Sandoval, who is term limited. Steve Sebelius is a political analyst for our Las Vegas affiliate KLAS and co-host of their weekly show Politics Now. Steve will be with us in Las Vegas next week and joins us now. Steve, I can't wait to get there. Let's start today with the Senate race. Polls are showing Heller and Rosen neck and neck. What is shaping this contest in the home stretch? Yeah, absolutely. They are uh, neck and neck. Their debate uh, last week uh, uh, featured some uh, very heated exchanges. I think Jackie Rosen interrupted uh, Dean Heller a little bit uh, more than he interrupted her, but uh, it is absolutely neck and neck. That race is way too close to call. Our early voting so far has the Democrats at 42 percent statewide, Republicans almost 39 percent. So the parties are, uh, are almost evenly uh, divided there. So it's going to be very close, not only that race, but all the races, I think, down the ticket. So Senator uh, Bernie Sanders was in Nevada today campaigning for Rosen and former President Barack Obama and Vice President Joe Biden have also visited in the last week. Have these visits made an impact on energizing voters for the Democrats? Yeah, I think they do. I think they do on both sides. Mm -hmm. President Trump uh, made a visit to uh, Elko, Nevada, uh, part of the rural areas, uh, to uh, boost turnout there. Uh, turnout's always very high in the rurals and also very Republican uh, in the rurals. Vice President Mike Pence will be here this weekend, Saturday, to do the same thing. But yes, I, th I think uh, that uh, those rallies do kind of uh, uh, fire people up, remind them that, hey, there is an election. Early voting is going on right now, so you can get to the polls uh, as soon as you finish here your favorite uh, 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 surrogate to uh, speak. Hmm. So, uh, so I do think that uh, will boost turnout. What about the governor's race? Another very close contest. Nevada has not elected a Democratic governor in two decades. What is the state of this race? <laughs> That race is also very, very close uh, statewide. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's a contest, I think, uh, uh, you know, Steve Sisolak is not as well known in the northern part of the state. But then again, Adam Laxalt hasn't been in the state for very long. He only showed up in 2011. Uh, so these, these two candidates are unknown to a lot of voters, uh, and they're going to be uh, replacing a very popular Republican governor. We haven't seen a really competitive governor's race since Brian Sandoval was elected. Uh, first back in uh, 2008. So this is going to be a, a very spirited contest. And again, as the polls show, it's very close, uh, too close to call, I would say. So relatives of Adam Laxalt published an op-ed this week in the Reno Gazette Journal saying that he is unfit to be governor, calling him phony. Has that impacted his campaign? Yeah, it, not quite as much as that ad in Arizona where all of the uh, family members of the candidate mm -hmm. came out and said uh, they're voting against him. But right. it's something very similar to that. Uh, there are different factions in that family. Uh, a number of other uh, Laxalt family members uh, wrote to say, no, he is qualified to be governor and, uh, and he, you should elect him. So, uh, so there's some de definitely some divisions within that Laxalt family. And again, Laxalt is a very famous name for people who've been in uh, Nevada for a long time, uh, former senator and governor, Paul Laxalt. Uh, so, uh, so there's, a, I think, a slight advantage uh, uh, that he has in terms of name recognition. Well, what about President Trump's popularity in Nevada? Hillary Clinton won the state in 2016, but these races are close. How do voters in Nevada feel about Mr. Trump two years later? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of the Republicans here, uh, I, I've gone to uh, uh, rallies, conventions, meetings that Donald Trump uh, uh, attends, and he gets a huge crowds. He got uh, bigger crowds than Bernie Sanders. I'm sure he will tell you that uh, next time he is here in Nevada. Uh, remind you that he gets uh, uh, bigger crowds than, uh, than probably almost any other uh, figure. Uh, packs out ballrooms, standing room only type things. So I think he, he remains popular with the Republicans, especially the Republican base. Now, as far as independents and Democrats, I think he's very unpopular. And uh, when you add it all up, as you did in 2016, there's slightly more people who don't like Donald Trump than who do. So then are Republican candidates aligning themselves with Mr. Trump? 
Yeah, as a matter of fact, they are. Uh, Dean Heller, who uh, in, in 2016 said everything but I will vote against Donald Trump, said he was 99% against Donald Trump, has come around to be 99% in love with Donald hmm. Trump. In fact, Donald Trump used that exact word, love, uh, that, uh, that he has for Dean Heller. So they are very close now. And Adam Laxalt has always uh, been more of a conservative, a doctrinaire conservative candidate. And so he and Donald Trump are much more aligned. I think so. Yeah, those candidates are lining up uh, in our third congressional district. Danny Tarkanian, uh, a, a perennial candidate. This is his sixth run for office. He is probably Donald Trump's biggest fan and makes no bones about it. So, yeah, there are many candidates who are lining up with the president. OK, so you mentioned that race. What about other uh, races, House races? What else should we pay, be paying attention to here? Uh, I think we should also be paying attention, uh, especially to the fourth congressional district. This pits two former uh, congressmen from that district, Crescent Hardy, the Republican, and Stephen Horsford, the Democrat, against each other in a rematch. Uh, that race has been kind of quiet uh, compared to the other races under the under the radar. Uh, but that's going to be definitely one to watch uh, on election night to see how this goes. Is this blue wave going to happen, or is it not going to happen? And uh, right now, I'd have to say, with the numbers we're seeing and the and the behavior of the voters in the primary, I don't think we're going to see a huge blue wave. It's not going to be a, a tsunami if it is a blue wave at all. All right, Steve Sebelius, Viva Las Vegas. We will see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Looking forward to it.